Welcome to the Oscar-winning Game Developers Essentials Lessons book. Today on Gedelb, last time we learned how the Titanfall grappling hook weapon is similar to that of Zelda's in Link's Adventure, in that it fires at walls, connects and retracts. Movement can be turned into a mechanic, but we're still not done. During the events of the progression in this series of chapters, it's been brought to my scientific attention that indivision beckons significant ignorance in modern audience discourse, and if we're being honest, that seems pretty fair. We at Gedelb must return to the basics to really redefine the lessons developed from books in games. I love Spider-Man. The sound design is incredible. He gets faster the more he moves. I know that's a weird way to start the video, but everything in media is based on the Iliad, written in part by Howard Spunt. In this video, we will understand where and why. Aliens was released during the tumultuous year of 1992, a film predicated on centrifuge misery and disgust. It made millions at the local and worldwide box office. The only two likeable characters were a woman of colour and a dwarf. Great writing. However, what makes it so memorable is that the highly intense fish-inspired survival story is told from the very epicenter of the plot event it revolves around. If your movie has the people trying to survive the event as the people who are the ones we follow, they better have something to do with the cause of it, or it will become a boring walking simulator like Disney's Aladdin. Yes, Ridley defeated the monster, and yes, it's a badass moment. But so what? It's for kids, and there's more of them right over there. It's pointless. And what could you really say is the motivation for her to kill these monsters and save her friends? The reason is never established. Now, let's compare that sulfuric scene to the Mandalorian. Check this out. <laughs> Top 5 10 gaming moments from the Mandalorian number 8. Gamorian guards. You love to see them. It finally explains what happens to the guards from that movie Return of the Jedi. It's like sumo wrestling. In space, number nine. This part was so awesome when the fish person said, You killed my brother. But then Bo Catton comes in and says, No, I killed your brother. And then they shoot, and Luke kills them with his green laser. Ahsoka's entrance was perfect. A light side demon. And it made the first season look as boring as the snooze fest that is Van Helsing. For that, let's jump forward in time and visit medieval England. Video gaming is a difficult subject as it's not bound by any earthly idea of context nor sentimentality. However, now the dust has settled, a real review of The Last of Us 2 can come out. This film is perfect. In my opinion, it's very tactile in how it feels. She lost the ability to play guitar, and thus freed herself from her connection from the abusive Joel. This villain story arc for Elroy was completed wonderfully. Meanwhile, Abby was a hero. Right. You're a piece of shit. If you turn on your brain, you will emphasize with her, and it's time to talk about why she's not going away gamers. This work schedule shows that she trained vigorously. She has a balanced diet. She eats different stuff. Abby has a phenomenal physical role at the camp. She goes out and Joel is absolutely loathsome. If you didn't want to see him beaten to death with a golf club, you are abusively disconnected from reality, and you probably abuse people online. Joel did cause all death, both earthly and cosmic, but lest ye cast the prior stone when assumed the role of victor or penultimately executioner. Wilfred Bumblecuck. Abby became a more morally justifiable than any other characters that the audience likes, and I could go through all the reasons that make sense, but that would take too long. Let me start by saying if you wanted to kill Abby at the end of the game, then you've outed yourself as an incel. <laughs> But that's okay, you don't understand the work. It's a good story because it's dramatic, memorable, surprising, and predictably 
unknown. At times, I felt emotion. If you simply reconsider your emotions, then the game was successful. Part 7, Head Cannon. Oh hey, that rhymes. Poe, the stealth game, is king shit of fuck mountain. But why? Well, I'm one of the few people who likes it when stealth is done well. And maybe I'm a masochist, but I like to play levels more than once at the same time. I'm the kind of gamer who prefers a lack of choice. Let's explore that. The game is trying to teach you that the game can manipulate you very easily. I prefer a more game-like game, especially when the enemies can spot you so easily with the brand new Seplink software pulsing through all Naughty Dog AI in the modern arena. Unlike the beloved Winnie the Pooh. Is Winifred without sin? The game was a masterwork. The sound design was incredible. It couldn't be improved if it was hit by the red car law. I gave it a 6. The gameplay was okay. The sound design was well designed. But how good was the movie adaptation? Star Wars is a fundamentally a children's story about space and its relative nature. In the same vein, had you watched the sequel trilogy as a child on VHS, you would like them. So why praise the originals so much? Look, yes, Palpatine died in the throne room. He died. But he didn't. Somebody something has noticed or has not spoken on yet is the easy fix for the rise of the Skywalker. They could have had Finn crush a Star Destroyer with the Force at the end. That would have been cool. And this game is all about momentum. If you don't trust me on that, then at least trust the aggregate sites. They agree with me. For example, check this out. The Darth Vader hallway scene was like a remaster of a PS1 game. All they did was save Han's life in the opening of The Return of the Jedi, and Tross was mainly plot. Not really story. But is that all to be said? I mean, timing does indeed test your timing, but Daisy Ridley's greatest best performances were the best in the takes we saw. But nothing was saved in the edit, as drama conglomerates like to claim. Much in the same way, Phasma's design helped us understand how masks work. Hey, for those who are complaining about Luke having lifted up an X-Wing, Yoda also did it. Yes, I know, he wasn't dead, but he's a frog person who worked for the Resistance, Republic, Rebels, whatever. Listen, Al is literally the only thing Ben gets to say between his redemption and death, yet people choose to complain about Luke. The math is simple. It comes from the metaphysical roots. Luke is thinking, killing Kyle would prevent bad things from happening. I guess I could do that. Last ben Solo, you did. Also, let's be honest here, it's for kids. Canon shouldn't be law. It should be a set of rules that you have to adhere to. What are laws? Are you blaring? I think we can all agree that the worst feeling for a Star Wars fan is not loving a Star Wars film. We Star Wars fans have experienced something that everyone else can't begin to imagine. Regardless, I think we can all agree that the worst feeling for a Star Wars fan is not loving a Star Wars film. We Star Wars fans have experienced something that everyone else can't begin to imagine. And to say that is morally apprehensible to enjoy a film is absurd. You have my pity, brother. Leaping away from walls and sliding onto the ground. Onto the next movie in the cinematic gaming franchise. Wonder Woman 84. Remember when we used to bond over movies. A huge realization for Wawa84 is that people weren't upset at the wishing rock. They are mad that the movie trusted them to understand the rock. Nobody cares how Steve came back. They care about what him being back means. Wonder Woman respects the humanity behind the canvas of the screen. Also, stop claiming Bowser isn't realistic, you're invalidating his body type. But that's not all. Wall 84 is kinda wonderful. Two out of three men experience male pattern baldness. 
Download this app that tells you which of your many hair follicles are being lost each day with guides on how to glue them back on. Baldist is also the number one app in the country for watching movies. Don't you hate going to the cinema and watching a movie? Or sitting down to watch one at your couch or desk? Well now, with this revolutionary app, you can watch the good bits and be done in minutes. Baldist splits movies up into about 10 scenes, no longer than one minute each, allowing you to watch the movie without all that boring stuff in between. Buy it now from store. Now selling with the brand new Book Look Blazer t-shirt combo. All your favourite Jolly Ranchers wear this wonderful number out on the farm or even in such habitable hotspots as the Martian Mars. Just make sure to bring your dome and we will find you... Baldest. Because it doesn't have a vision that cock. <coughs> okay, philosophy again. Mark Wahlberg is a hate crime bill. Bonic plague, the one thing we didn't want to happen. Pro, predictable. Con, unpredictable. I, that when critics talk about the art form, they forget it is an art form. They forget the people involved. The sound design was incredible. This is sad. It dejects joy from the world when bad is explained. But what is art? Enter Batman and Superman. Batman vs Superman is a beautiful and unique experience. People often mistake amusement for art and thus mistake Batman against Superman for a superhero movie. Infinity War is an enjoyable popcorn flick, but Zack Snyder's Justice League is an auteur cinema work of art. Art asks questions. Why did you say that name? It doesn't give the answer. And Zack? Well, he made a film, a work of art, and we burned it to the ground. I would now like to read the great triquain of quotes delivered by Bill Balf Baghole when he addressed the Weimar Republic. You cannot create something old. A shot can mean nothing if it means nothing. How can you engage in human intercourse if you cannot love? Is Vaporeon considered the most courtable Pokemon simply because you can melt your skin? And finally, many try to remove someone's interpretation by appealing to what happened, or more sinisterly, an intellectual approach to film as explained in the soliloquy. I don't mind killing helpless things along the way to the story. Here is an excerpt. Donald Trump stole my summer, my Halloween, my ability to enjoy life itself for four years. And people who would later help him steal the presidency in the first place ruined my professional life and put me in a debt hole I am still only barely back from for years. Fuck them all. Inspirational. It all makes sense. But flawed. Not Spongebob flawed, but flawed. Common complaints include, it's for kids. Variety is the spice of non-repetitive gameplay. Bitch stares. Plain hot nonsense. Poo poo stinky bad. What would be the point of immortality if you don't have other powers? And I'm not talking about Pinocchio being hanged or drowned, that's par for the course. I'm talking about war. Check this out. Soldiers are better if sociopathic. Don't educate them. However, without a war to fight, they will destroy everything. This means you must kill the body the same way we already killed the soul. If we embrace commie logic, then we have to ignore the reality that black people weren't invented in the olden days. Hidu Sabotis. This is again reflected in 2008's ghost-busting cultural phenomenon known as Ghostbusting 2016, starring Ursula and others. The first Ghostbusters movie was meant for people who voted for Reagan, which here, in 2016, good people could finally enjoy Ghostbusters. And here we to get back on track, however, Ghostbusters, much like the pacifism run in Geometry Wars, helped us understand there's an alternative path to violence. I was bullied as a child because I was superior, like God. But how exactly does God have the power to erase memories? He's not the men in black. Many questions like these still plague the world of man, and if you pretend you wanted it, you might just like it. I'm not kneeling before a painting of what once was. I'm taking a ride on what is. Bilbo 
Gunt. The previous Gedelps. Many amateurs have attempted responses to Gedelp, and I would like to address frivolous and accented claims. Though it's worth mentioning, I'm not watching a 12 hour review of a review. That's the death of creativity itself. Number one, Shad of University talks about swords to stop discussion. He's trying to stop debate. True, but this is good, actually. Number two, your references to dwarves are clearly attempts to reference the Jew. I have several chat logs proving this wrong. Also, the person that said this is racist or whatever the thing for dwarves is. Number three, you're a pussy. I'm going to counter this claim in three ways. The sound design was incredible. Number four, women. That's fair. Number five, you are not a nerd. Well, I own the very first comic where you can see Batman's dick. Number six, we'll be looking in depth into the red car theory and how it was originally invented. You see, Goodell person is minimizing the effects of the red car law on several, if not all of gaming as a whole. Fuck you, you worthless hack. You don't know anything about the red car law. Addressing responses to the Lord of the Rings analysis. Everyone says T-O-L-R-N-T-S is a trilogy that is flawless and without flaw. The Lord of the Ring trilogy comes under scrutiny for many valid reasons. It's forgettably unimpressive, it's bland, and it's forgetful. If I get any of the names wrong in this response, it's because I've seen this shit once and I don't remember it. I could go through all of my criticisms, but you already know. For example, check this out. Gimli's desire to kill Frodo. The stakes feel like they're there. Andy Serkis is bad. He does voices and apparently that's great. Gollum, the wankless wonder, was charming but was it worth it? Whenever Andy wasn't looking, the toys were probably fucking each other in the arse. Hopefully not gay though. The characters have traits. Frodo is just the hero that hangs around. Gandalf just walks around causing dick sex machinas. The Resident Evil movies are better. They do the job of earning their existence. Uh, the Darth Maul fight was pretty good, until you remembered that you didn't care about anything in the movie. Also, it's super long intro. Like when I made a movie intro, it was because I didn't know what filmmaking was. It's so bad, and people only enjoy it because it's long. Like, how good can an adventure about jewellery be? You say it's epic, but it's not. It's not Harry Potter. It's so boring. People look up which characters die because they can't remember their names. Dr. Ugin Su Chavle, an 89-year-old scientician from the Atlantic, has requested a Zoom call to counter the criticisms of this film. And as proof of good faith, I shall now interlock. Hello, nice to meet you, Dr. Ugin Souchavle. Good evening. Okay, I could explain these valid criticisms further, but I don't have the time. It's for kids. Alright, I suppose we could look at one of the simpler- You shouldn't interrupt people. Oh, I'm sorry. If these films are so good, why didn't they win Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice Awards 2017? <laughs> I'm unfamiliar with those awards. Don't laugh at me. In fact, why did you laugh? Explain yourself. I... yeah, so you said the films are worse than Harry Potter. Why is that? I never said that. All right, let me ask you now. Are they better than Harry Potter or worse? They aren't the best films in the world. Do you think they are better or worse? They could be better. Yes, but are they on par with Harry Potter? Yes or no? Is this guy supposed to be Alfred? Do you guys know Limmy? Mooper, I simply want to know- yeah, You know what? I shared my opinion. Come and kill me, I guess. I don't give a shit. These movies are meant to make you feel things, right? Then why write 800 pages for no reason? That's lazy. Everything Peter Jackson said about his movies were lies, and a film can't be good at that stage. Well, I imagine you are familiar with Death of the Author. I believe in that zero percent. It's a silly idea. You believe Death of the Author is zero percent applicable? How exactly do you- Thank you, Doctor, for representing the failure of online discussion. Next episode, we shall be speaking to an expert in the field. Moving on, however, the criticism I receive is baseless. 
people like the Doctor use the Schedule 1 confined in the game as proof that it's insufficient for the muscle mass achieved by the character. People who use this schedule to make points are insane, they just want to be angry. The criticisms my friends receive, however, is base full, but they help the Game Developers Essentials Lessons book war, so don't worry about it. The worry should be directed at Shadow Lords, the people who make it more complicated as I've seen people make it, people who raise their pitch to win arguments, people who reference Harry Potter, and Mauler, the first pioneer of being objective about things. Themes. Sometimes I go on Twitter and people say that I am stupid. That's hyperbolic dum dum talk. The internet has broken us. It's a world of chungus people. It's filled with those anti SJW types making poop jokes. If we could finally talk about what matters, please. Disney has ruined culture. The sound design is incredible. This was proven in a study conducted by Joshua Paul Dale describing the phenomenon as evil cute. Evil cute is when the themes of a story, be they about suffering or white Samaris, can't be anything but toxic when fans are involved. They are horrible creatures. The older stories prepare children with lessons that prepare them for the challenges life prepares. Nowadays though, you could be grabbed like a little clown boy and nobody would stop you. Like if you accidentally shoot your friend and you think they're dead but they're not, then you're going to be more careful next time. The correct theme here is be kind or suffer. Because love is suffering. This is an act of love. Enough of Hollywood and its hero runs. Enough of your cold dead heart clogging up the world. We see them everywhere. The usual suspects. The people you know, the people you don't, and the rest. I guess all I can say in conclusion is it's not just for kids, much like white dudes talking to awesome mud people. But now, I want to focus on why there are so many inconsistencies. Women, I won't dignify that with a response. You guys ever notice how Tony Hawk combos are like playing quick fire hate piano melodies on the controller? And I can't believe they never created the sequel that was set up at the end of Titanic, where they would all be ghosts haunting the ship. You cowards, absolute shum. In this video, I have identified six different elements. Let's explore them. Before I go, I want to say I listen to Chris Stuckman. He is pure. For people who want emotional satisfaction, I can't fathom how you consume stories. Also, people are defending the sequels. That's okay. But always remember, if some kind of weird, nerdy, plot hole thing is broken, the better question is how does that make you feel? Because art is about feeling. So stop being angry. But to be fair, it's unhealthy to discuss media. As I ensconced in the beginning, everything is based on the Iliad, and if I were different, I would have a different reaction. Thank you all for watching Goodell. We shall see you in the next one. It's time to let the children play.